Hi guys, it's Kelly and I am back again with another video. Today's video is going to be about watercoloring, but it also features the new watercolor media mat from Waffle Flower. So this is, um, I, I've, been, I've had it for a couple of weeks now. I'm also using Peony Dreams stamps and dies for this uh, card, which is also by Waffle Flower. Um, I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. I really am enjoying it quite a lot. Um, I like that it's white. That just, I like things that look um, super clean. And for me, because I do YouTube videos, um, it's awesome for when I'm doing the video. Uh, I love my Ranger Craft Mat and I've used that for years. That's the little piece that you guys always thought was marble, um, but it is reflective. So when I have the lights, you know, I gotta have the lights in order for you to be able to see what I'm doing. And then, um, but it would reflect, um, which was not, I guess, awesome when I was doing uh the video. Um, so I like that this is matte and it isn't reflective. We'll get back to the other things I like about it soon. Um, but so I'm using Whisper uh, Amalgam Ink by Gina K to go ahead and stamp down my, um, this is the stem part of it with the leaves. And then I'm also going to stamp the large, uh, one of the large florals that comes in it. This is why you should put down your magnets before you pick up your stamp because I forgot to and then I had to reposition it anyway. Um, you'll see that they're not connected. They're not connected because I plan to um, die cut them out um, and put them on a different card base. This card went very differently than I had originally thought, which is why there's two cards with the same product um, that look very different. Um, so I actually did a poll on Instagram where I shared both cards and I asked... Um, which one would you rather stay? This this one, which is the no line um, t -t 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 watercolor. <laughs> I don't know why that word was eluding me. No line watercolor um, with the die cuts, or if you wanted to see the watercolor background with the Copics, or both and both won overwhelmingly. So here I'm using some liquid watercolors from Hero Arts. And this mat has 12 little wells on the right hand side that you can put your colors in. Um, or if you are doing a technique um, or you want a larger mixing area, you can use the center portion of it as just a huge palette as well. Um, so I'm just kind of dropping these in. I don't use mini ink cubes. All of my Distress Inks, Distress Oxides ink pads are pretty much full size, but these are perfectly sized for a mini ink cube to fit it in there, squish it, and then, um, you know, move on to the next one. So that's kind of nice. Um, so here I'm just using a bunch of different colors. I'll link them, you know the deal, um, before I get my watercolor going. On the top left, you will see that background, because um, I told you originally I had a very different plan for this. The way that I like to do my watercoloring is a little bit more controlled, especially when I'm doing um, no out, like no line. So no, there's no outline. I don't want it to look like a hot mess. Um, so I do tend to be a little bit more controlled with it. Um, I like to put down a line of color uh, where I want it to be the darkest. And then I go, um, I rinse off my brush. I take that brush, I dab it on just the base of the bristles on a, like a paper towel. And then I go in and spread out the color. This helps me keep very minimal amounts of water on my paper, enough to move my pigment, but not enough to flood the area. And then um, that's why you can see me working so closely um, together with watercolor. You don't wanna work next to two areas that are wet, but because I'm using such minimal water, um, the first one's dry by the time I get around to doing the second one. In this particular image, it is a large peony. Um, but there's like a little fairy, a little girl who's kind of like lounging around in the center of it. Um, and so I am coloring her first um, before I get to the rest of the flower. Um, pretty much I just was mixing up some skin tones, which I mixed their, um, what is it? It's, I think their red is a, called strawberry. Um, so I did a little bit of that, a little bit of the orange, um, and a little bit of the yellow and just kind of mixed it until I found a good skin tone for what I was looking for. I wanted, um, you know, a, I guess a middle peach color, um, because I wanted, I didn't want her to stand out completely from the flower. I wanted her to blend in a little bit. 
Um, and so just the areas of her that are shown are her two arms, her face, and her neck, and then her two legs. That's it. Like, the, the middle of her body is sunk into this flower, and it isn't an area um, that's visible. So, anywho, originally the game plan was to do a uh, kind of a messy watercolor background, which is what you see there on the left-hand side, and then do a more structured, more controlled watercolor, die cut that out, and then put one on top of the other. Um, and you'll see as I go through the process um, that I didn't like it. I just didn't, I felt like the messier background detracted from the controlled watercolor, um, and so I decided to just make it into two cards. That seemed to be the best option for me because um, I had already put in the work for the one on the left, you know, painted the, the background um, and clearly had put in the work for this one because um, no line watercoloring can be a little bit time consuming. But I wanted to uh, use both of the parts. And so I ended up combining the one on the left with my Copic markers. Um, and that worked out. So two very different styles. So if you are a person who is more controlled with their watercolor, you don't like the messy look, um, this one, this first card will definitely be for you. The second one will not be. Um, if you are a person who likes the messier look, is more into um, like the mixed media, things like that, um, then the second card will be for you. Now, they're not both going to be in this video because both of them do take a little bit of time. And my videos are already long to begin with. You guys know here in a minute, I'm going to, uh, well, no, here right now, I'm going to speed up the painting because I want you to be able to see all of it. Um, but it's just too, if I, I, you know, I tell you this every time I do a watercolor, pretty much. If I left the whole thing in there, we would just be here until your babies were in college, honestly. Like, <laughs> we just would be. Um, so, again, I'm this time I'm using the pink um, from Hero Arts. And then I'm adding in, it's like a pinkish purple. It's called Mulled Wine, uh, which, even though I don't like purple, m may be one of my favorite colors from their line of liquid watercolors. And then I'm also going to um, add in a little bit of the yellow, just because I like mixed colors. That's just me. I think that the way that they mix together is really pretty and it's, you know, you'd never be able to recreate it twice the way that the water mixes them is the way that the water mixes them. And um, I just, I enjoy that look very much to me. That is one of the main reasons why I take the time to watercolor. Um, but that isn't necessarily something that you have to do. Um, so the same thing over and over again, just putting down that line of, um, watercolor where I want it to be the darkest, rinsing off my brush, dabbing the base of the bristles, and then going in with the minimal amount of water. You will see in here occasionally I do get too much water. When that happens, you can either A, um, sop it up with like the corner of a paper towel, or you can um, rinse off your brush, dry it, and then put your brush back in. If your brush is drier than the paper, it will actually suck pigment up versus depositing it. So that's just something that's a little, um, a nice little trick to know in case it's just a little bit of water and you don't want to have to suck up every, you know, all of the water that you've put down. I am going a little bit heavier with the pigments um, because I like bolder color and watercolors naturally dry back uh, as they dry. They just do, they get lighter. So I know that I need to go heavy in order for me to be happy with the color at the end of it. Um, if that's not your style, you certainly don't need to do that. You can do it in whatever range of hues um, makes you happy. So back to this mat. Um, so I... I really like that it doesn't have a reflection. I really like that it's like a super clean look. Um, that's why you always see me in the background using my um, Simon Says Stamp grid paper because it's white. Um, it's white and so it makes the video lighter uh, and the products, the the coloring, the whole deal easier to see. Um, so this, I like having an alternative for my watercolor um, that will do the same thing for me. As far as functionality, um, 
I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I've ink blended on it and had no issues. Um, and these basically just clean up with a baby wipe. And when I clean up my watercolors, you'll see that process that they, um, you know, they just wipe right away. It's super nice. Uh, so this is made with food grade silicone. So um, it is um, like heat resistant. It is, um, you know, waterproof. It is... Um, you know, you could just wipe it away if it sticks to your surface, um, which is awesome. The only, I guess I did notice because I have a dog, uh, my dog hair does stick to it, but it's silicone, so that doesn't really surprise me. Um, I just, you know, wipe it off with a baby wipe and haven't really had any issues, but it will stick to your surface, so that way when you're painting, nothing's moving around. Um, when I put my craft mat down, my um, Ranger craft mat, when I put that down, my my desk is a glass top. Um, and so when I put that down, I had to use, um, what did I use? I used glue dots on the back of it, like on the back of the four corners to keep it from moving around. And this does not require that. Um, so that's super cool. Um, the only thing that they will caution you on is you can't cut on it. If you poke it with a sharp knife, if you try to do some exacto knife cutting on it, you will um, cut your mat. That is, you just will. So this is not, it's not all purpose as far as everything that you, like a, a glass top would be. Um, but with it being the white silicone, it's so much easier to see your colors and see the colors that you're mixing. Um, I did have a little bit of problem with that because my... Um, Ranger Craft Mat is like a light brown. Well, mine isn't anymore because it's just so beat up. <laughs> it's just so beat up. And I have gotten, like, I I have gotten all of my money out of that thing. I, ha I really have. I've had it for years and years. Um, so really enjoying this as an alternative. Um, and what was the other thing? Oh, it can stain. Um, and I didn't, I have not noticed it with any of the ink blending I've been doing. So I think it's more, um, and this is just my opinion from my, my experience, guys. Um, I think it's more when you have a watercolor or a paint um, sitting in there. And these watercolors did sit for quite a while for me uh, because I did do two different cards. Um, the only one that left a little bit of staining was that uh, strawberry color, or the, the pink color, the, like the hot pink. The red didn't stain, the yellow, none of the dark blues or the dark purples, dark greens, none of those stained. Um, so just, I had a little bit, very little bit of staining with the, um, with the red, n no, lies, pink. Um, and I know that they have like a designated cleaner for it. I don't have that. So I'm not sure if even that would help to kind of take that pigment away. I may try it in the future um, just because I really do like, you know, that it's white. Uh, regardless, um, I think as you can see here, just looking at the video, most of the time the paint pots portion of it, um, say that three times fast, paint pots portion. Yeah. Um, anyway, it won't be visible on camera anyway, so it doesn't really concern me. Um, and I haven't had any staining at all in the main white area, which would be where my, I would be filming at anyway. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, what else? Uh, oh, so we're moving on to the um, leaves. We're doing this pretty much the, the same way. Um, I'm using the moss color and then the... Um, do, do, do the lighter blue is it salty blue it's a lighter blue anyway like I said it'll all be links and um a little bit of the pine color for my leaves and branches um and then this is just the the basic like I'm you know going in there putting down all my colors everything else and then once it's dry I'll go back in and put in some details into the flower into the bud into my leaves um yeah, so what have we not talked? I feel like I have a bunch of things to tell you, but then when I sit down to have the conversation, I forget what it was. Um, so I did put this on Instagram. I really like being able to interact with you guys um, and ask your opinions and ask your your question, you know, ask you questions. Um, so there is that interaction. Uh, I did enjoy that very much. So, oh, Eric's cart. That's what That was the thing I was going to talk to you about. Because we haven't even addressed it since it went up. 
So clearly you guys totally got a kick out of it. I did as well. Um, it was really rather funny because I, um, I was like, will you do this voiceover with me? And he was like, this should not be seen on YouTube. Like this should not be seen. And I was like, but I've already edited it and it is going to be seen on YouTube. So either I'm going to do the voiceover alone or you can do it with me. And so after much coaxing, he was like, fine, I'll do it with you. And then we sat down to do it. And then I realized that I've never done a voiceover in front of anybody. Like I've never had anybody in a room while I was doing a voiceover and I totally got stage fright. I was like, oh, oh, I'm going to have to speak in front of you. Yeah, so never mind. Um, you don't need to do the voiceover. And he was like, oh, no, no, no. Listen, I'm here now. Like we've committed to this. And I was like, but I don't want to change my mind. I don't want to. So that is why at the beginning of the video, you hear him say, if I can make myself uncomfortable, so can you, because he's actually the one who hit the record button. I wouldn't do it. I was too busy trying to negotiate my way out of it. Um, and then eventually just, you know, kind of felt more like a conversation between the two of us. And so it wasn't, you know, we were just kind of in it. Um, but I thought it was super fun and it seemed like you guys really enjoyed it as well. Uh, several of you made comments about having him come back and do another one. Um, so he's not opposed. He is not opposed to coming back and doing another one. Uh, his only request is uh, that he would like you guys to send in some questions. So that way he doesn't feel like um, he has to make up something to talk about. That it would be easier if he if he had some some questions to go off of. Um, so if you want to leave those in the comments below, anything you would like to um, ask Eric or ask me and Eric, um, then yeah, I think I can probably talk him into doing another one. There was um, who Lydia Fiedler uh, did a video. I think was it this week, this last week I think it was this week um where she actually had she Lizzie listens to tons of podcasts um on serial killers mostly and honestly she's kind of talking me into it I've read a lot of books on serial killers just because I think it's fast like I think the psychology behind it is fascinating um which doesn't really you know shouldn't really surprise you working in criminal justice like there's obviously a reason why I got into it um so I just think people are super interesting that's the same reason why I like autobiographies but so she listens to a ton of podcasts and one of the podcasts that she listens to, um, which she said is not her norm, is called Varmints. And it is done by uh, this guy named Paul. And so she, I guess, reached out to him and asked him if he would be willing to do a voiceover of one of her cards. And it was hysterical. It was so funny. I'm a, I will link to it uh, in case you haven't seen it. But listening, like... Eric, obviously, when you guys were watching the video, like clearly pays attention to my videos, knows what some of the things are called, gets the general concept of it. Um, this Paul guy walked in blind. Um, and just some of the references that he makes, the names that he gives um, her items, uh, I can totally relate to because as you heard, you know, in when Eric did his video, video he calls my glue uh, mumbo jumbo multi-glue because that's what he thought I was saying. Like when I, we, I was first doing something or whatever. Oh, I know what it was. I had to stop the store because I was out. And I said, I have to stop by and get more Tombow glue. And he was like, the mumbo jumbo glue. And I was like, the Tombow mono multi glue. He's like, is that what you're saying? Um, so uh, yeah. So um, obviously they have their own little names for it. And especially if you aren't familiar with what they're actually called, it's very, very funny and entertaining to listen to what other people think those items are called. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will, I will link to Lydia's video because it was super, super fun. Um, I really love that there's other, like that people, like for me, obviously, Eric is my significant other. Um, for Lydia, this was a friend, but I just love that there's people out there, um, who are loving enough to support um, their friends or their significant others in this industry. Like, it just makes me happy. So here you can see that top right-hand corner. That's the, um, the amount of staining that I had. I don't really think it's a big deal, but none of the other ones um, stained at all. And there was a lot of dark colors on there didn't have any issues wiped it up this is just a baby wipe here 
this is where I originally put the card together and I didn't like it. I didn't feel like it was a good fit. So then I just moved it to a white background. In this particular stamp set, there are, um, the sentiments look like labels, which I love because you know I'm doing that all the time anyway. I'm just doing it with embossing. So here, this is me and I'm stamping out the sentiments for both of these cards. And I'm using Hero uh, Black Dye Ink for this. And then this um, this card is going to say uh, Hello Friend. And then the other card will say Be You. That's why there's three of them here. Um, I did end up stamping that twice. I have glued down my, um, my flower and my stem. And now I'm just going to pop up the sentiment on some foam tape right above it. And then that's it. Like the, basically the show here is the watercoloring. That's what I got. Um, I kind of wish I would have maybe done some spatters in the background because I think that would have been pretty, but I like, I do like how clean it is. So that's it. That's the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will be back shortly um, with another video, whether it be for the second card of this or um, a different one. Who knows? I don't know yet. All right. I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.